Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Contemporary Fiqh Issues. We have with us again in the studio our special guest, Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al Hakim. Sheikh Asim, welcome. Jazakumullah khair, and thank you for having me. Barakallahu feekum. Sheikh Asim is one of the well known callers and du'aat who has traveled extensively across the globe giving da'wah and lectures to both Muslims and non Muslims alike. Sheikh Asim, we'd like to deal today with the issue of insurance. However, it's not something that we find was existent during the time of the Prophet so unfortunately we don't really find any direct evidences or direct rulings regarding it from the Qur'an and Sunnah. How can we look at insurance from an Islamic point of view when we know that such a thing didn't exist before? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-ameen, nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Whenever we have something that was not at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and we need to study this thing, we have to look at its origin. And as we've stated this before, Islam is suitable for all times and for all locations because it was revealed from Allah and it is the final revelation. So it has to be compatible to all conditions and that is why whenever we have something of a contemporary nature as in the case of insurance we have to look at it and categorize it to see where it falls under so if we look at insurance we dissect it and we analyze it we find that it is a transaction and this makes it fall under the category of fiqh al-mu'amalat, the fiqh of transactions and contracts, etc. So what are some of the types of contracts or transactions we find in Islam just for the education of the viewers? There are a number of contracts. And for example, if I give you a gift, this is a contract because it's an agreement I am the giver and you are the, on the receiving end. This is considered to be a contract. It is similar to the contract of inheritance when you inherit something. Mm -hmm. It is similar to the contract of lending someone money just for the sake of Allah and then getting it back. These type of contracts are known to be as giving away contracts. So a contract in Islam doesn't have to be necessarily written down as long as it's agreed upon. Yes, the two parties. but mainly speaking most of the contracts are written down such as in the case of uh, uh, exchange contracts. You have exchange contracts like when you sell. So I'm giving you this thing, this item in exchange for money or in, this, in the case of rental. I'm not giving you to own it, but I'm giving you the benefit of using it. So buying and sell, um, selling is part of the exchanging uh, uh, contracts. Okay, so would it be extreme to say that insurance is a form of buying and selling? Is this true? This is true because this is what's happening. You're paying money in order to get a service. And this service is considered to be in exchange for the money you have paid. Of course there is another type of contracts and that is the contracts that are considered to be uh, of guarantee nature mm -hmm. such as mortgage for example uh, or what we know as a rahan, not necessarily mortgage of property mm -hmm. but when I borrow from you money and you ask for something as a guarantee so I tell you that my house is my guarantee. Like collateral. Yes, this okay. is what is known as also 
um, uh, uh, contracts of guarantee. Okay, so what about a contract of uncertainty, a contract that says if such and such might happen, then you will receive this? Well, if you'd like to know the nature of a contract, you have to go back to the roots. Mm -hmm. An insurance contract is talking about this uncertainty mm -hmm. because I'm paying money and I'm not sure where, whether I'm going to get my money back or it's going to go forever or am I going to get something that is more. And this is how the scholars look at an insurance contract. Mm -hmm. It's a contract between a company, the insurer, and a person who is having this insurance. And by it, the person pays money to the company where the company itself guarantees that if something happens, it will compensate the person who paid the money with X, Y, Z amount of money. Which could be more or less what he paid in the end. Most likely, it, it can be much, much more than what he paid initially. And that is why it falls under the buying and selling contracts. And this leads us to another way of looking at buying and selling contracts. Uh, Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, used to instruct people not to go to the market without knowledge of buying and selling contracts. Mm -hmm. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah, have, uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, also used to say that people who do not have knowledge of buying and selling, if they go to the market and trade with people, they will fall into usury. They will fall into interest-based transactions, which is haram. So you mentioned a very good point, Barakallahu Fikum, Ya Shaykh, that we'd just like to expand upon, uh, that Muslims in general, whenever approaching a situation, they should have knowledge of it before they get into it, before they make mistakes. This is true. And this leads us to the conditions of buying and selling. Because one would say, what is there to know? I go to the market, I buy something, I pay for it, and I leave. Mm -hmm. This is a transaction. It's not rocket science. Well, scholars said that it is not rocket science, but it has conditions. And these conditions have to be fulfilled. Otherwise, the transaction is not valid. And they put seven conditions. And they say that, first of all, there has to be agreement between the buyer and the seller. So if I come to you at gunpoint and say, sell me this, and you say, okay, just give me the money and go. This is by force. I'm forcing you. Even if I pay the full amount, it's still not a valid contract. Well, this is the full it's amount forced. from my side. From your side, it's under gunpoint. So definitely it's, it's <laughs> the right amount. That is why this is not permissible. Mm -hmm. And you can find this a lot among transactions. When people are pressured to sell and they don't want to sell, and this transaction would not be uh, correct or accepted. So then how would we classify insurance? Is it halal? Is it haram? Does it have conditions in order to be halal? It has a lot of conditions, but to go through the conditions of selling and, and buying, we have to list the seven conditions. Mm -hmm. So this one was the first one, is okay. the agreement. The second condition that a contract should be from a person who is allowed to have such a transaction. So if a child comes to me, five years old, with a, a, um, a bag full of money saying to me, I'd like to buy this Bentley Azure. And I say, well, okay, you have the money, I have the car, take it. This transaction is not valid at all. Because he's not mature enough. He's not old enough. He has to be uh, um, have reached the age of puberty. If an insane person comes to me and does the same and say, listen, I like your pen. Here's a million dollars. Again, this is not permissible. I'm, I'm lucky that he's buying it. But the transaction is not accepted in Islam because the man is not legible, is, is, is not qualified to buy and sell. So you'd be considered taking advantage of him. Definitely. And Islam forbids this completely. Uh, for example, um, there are a, a, a number of examples that can be mentioned, but they're not um, applicable in our times. For example, at the time of slavery, mm -hmm. 
if a slave buys and sells, this is not acceptable mm -hmm. because he is not allowed to buy and sell. And the third condition, they say that whatever you buy and sell has to be permissible. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if I go and buy a guitar, this is not permissible because I'm buying something that's haram. Mm -hmm. If I go and buy insects, this is not permissible because they have, it, it has no, no use or benefit to us. So this transaction is not halal. If I go and buy something that is impure mm -hmm. without any reason, Again, it falls under the same category. Or, for example, even if uh, you were to buy something that's halal, but the individual who's selling it knows your intention is to use it for haram. For example, if you were to buy, let's say, a kitchen knife to go murder someone. Or to buy grapes to make wine. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. This is not permissible uh, a transaction. Fourthly, it should be done from someone who owns the item. Mm -hmm. Who, and who owns the money. For example, I come to you and I say, that's a beautiful car. Would you sell it for me? He said, sure. It's not my car. It's not your car. So I, I, I'm end, uh, I end up buying something that's not yours. So the transaction is not right. I have no right to go to the owner of the car and say, listen, the guy sold it to me. It's not his. Uh, fifthly, it should be possible to de be delivered. And you have to be able to deliver it. So if I sell you uh, a piece of land on the moon, this is not permissible and the transaction is void and it's, uh, it's not valid because I cannot deliver this. The Prophet ﷺ forbade sales of uncertainty. Barakallah feekum, Shaykh, inshallah, we'd like to continue on this point. But right after the break, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sheikh, we were just discussing before the conditions for a sale to be permitted in Islam and you were discussing the last one, I believe, that the object or the item has to be able to be delivered. So you can't sell something, even if you own it, that is so far that nobody can ever reach it. Yeah, this is true. And this condition, which is the fifth condition, falls under bay al gharar which means the selling of uncertain things. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet forbade this so type awesome. of selling. And he told us that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that so it awesome. is not permissible to sell the selling of a stone and the selling of uncertainty. And what is the selling of a stone? Hmm. You can buy and sell stones, but at the time of Arabia, in the early times of Arabia, they used to have forms of a, a, a selling or transactions that were uncertain. In the mm -hmm. sense that you come to my shop and you say, and I tell you, take this stone and throw it. And any piece of cloth that it falls on, it's yours for $10. Mm -hmm. So it may fall on a piece of cloth that is worth $1. And it may fall on a piece of cloth that wor is worth $100. So it's like a chance. It's like gambling. Yes. And this is completely forbidden. And this cascades down to a lot and a lot of present uh, 
uh, uh, nowadays uh, transactions. Like these mystery bags that uh, some stores have. They say, okay, $10, you get a mystery bag. Inside it, you could find chocolate and candies that are worth $5 or that are worth $10 or more. That's true. And this is completely forbidden in Islam. Another type is bay al mulamasa, selling by touching. Mm -hmm. So you go in a dark room and you just touch whatever item you touch, it's for $10. So in a sense, anything by chance. Anything that is uncertain. uncertain. You, you're not sure of the condition. And likewise, if I sell you like uh, um, three kilos of tuna fish mm -hmm. in the sea, I haven't caught them yet, but it's yours just for $10. Mm -hmm. This is not permissible because I, I do not have them at hand. So, and this is, leads us to uh, uh, the sixth condition, which falls in the same category. If I sell you birds flying in the sky. First of all, you don't own them. And I do not have the ability to deliver them, not mm -hmm. just yet, but once the transaction takes place, I have to be sure that I have them. But selling birds in the sky and fish in, uh, in, the, in the water, this uh, is not permissible. So, for example, could somebody say, let's say there's a certain shirt that I want to uh, buy, but it's too far for me to travel to and I'm too busy. Could I give you, can trust with you money and say, go buy me the shirt and you come and sell it to me at a profit before you own it? No, this is not permissible. I have to, it, it's either and then we have to go back to the roots. Once you gave me the money, am I your agent mm -hmm. and you're giving me power of attorney to buy this on your behalf mm -hmm. or am I making profit out of it. If I'm making profit out of it, I have no right to sell you something that I do not own. So you can't give what you don't have. Yes. But if I'm your agent, I'm your friend, I'm acting on your behalf, this is permissible because I will not make a dime out of it. I'm just doing what you want me to do. But can an agent, for example, say I will take a fee for going and getting it for you? Then he would not become an agent. He would become someone who is hired. Mm -hmm. and all of these are classified in Islam. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people m have misconceptions when it comes to transactions and say, listen, somebody told me to buy him a, a bottle of perfume. And he, I told them it, is, it cost 200 riyals, but then I got a discount from the, off, from the shop. And they gave it to me for 150. So can I keep the 50? Mm -hmm. The answer is no, because you're acting on his behalf. I said, well, it's costing me money. Mm -hmm. In this case, tell him that I'll charge you for this service and this charge would be again hiring it's what you give to a worker it wouldn't be the same as buying and selling yes so among the things among the conditions the sixth condition that you have to be able to deliver it mm -hmm. and this is the fifth condition the sixth condition is that you have to sell something that is visible mm -hmm. that is measurable but if you sell something that is not this is not permissible. For example, I've got a cow that's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I'll sell you what's in the cow's uh, uh, belly. And I don't know if it's a twin or one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's healthy or sick. I don't know if it's going to come out alive or dead. And mm -hmm. you say, okay, I'll take my chances. This is haram. You cannot buy such a thing or uh, uh, buy the seeds of, 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 uh, of, of dates, for example. Uh, without seeing it, without actual, actually weighing it. Mm -hmm. So this is the sixth part or the, the sixth condition. The last and, and, and seventh condition, that the price should be fixed. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it is not permissible for me to come and buy your car and I take the car and the transaction is done and a week later you say, okay, now you give me the money. I said, okay, here's the money. And he said, no, this is not what I had in mind. The, this dispute makes the transaction void. So for example, someone who would get into a taxi and the taxi would drive him to the location and after that they would discuss the price after he's been given the service. This is not permissible. You have to agree on a price before you get him. Yes, and because unless it, you have a meter. Unless, or there's a general agreement in the culture about that what the cost is. That is 10 pounds or 10 rials or 10 dollars mm -hmm. or whatever. This is uh, uh, understood. Or there's a, a meter that does this. but. To just go blindly and then dispute afterwards, this is not uh, permissible. Mm -hmm. So these are the seven conditions that scholars say anyone who's involved in selling and buying should fulfill them. Mm -hmm. Now, if we would like to look at insurance, 
you tell me, what do you think uh, uh, the insurance falls under? Well, considering insurance is something of uncertainty. You don't know if such and such is going to happen, and you don't, well, this is for insurance, let's say, with, uh, with regards to insurance for a house or a car, but life insurance, you know you're going to die. Okay. So how would that be classified? Well, scholars looked at insurance as it's presently being done, mm -hmm. and they said it, there are many things that go against Islam. Mm -hmm. First of all, it is a form of riba, mm -hmm. of interest. And one would usually think that, that's strange. I'm not lending anyone money. And they, people, always have this uh, um, conviction that riba is related to borrowing, mm -hmm. which is not. Riba of borrowing is one type of riba. Mm -hmm. There is riba al-fadl, and there is riba al-nasi'ah. Mm -hmm. And there is riba al-qard, which is related to borrowing. In insurance, what's happening is that you're giving the money in dollars mm -hmm. and getting a lump sum more in dollars. So this is a transaction. What is it? It's not profit. I didn't sell and buy. But it is selling the money that I have for this policy. And the policy, once I have an accident, it gives me, it generates more. And it's kind of like the whole, uh, what they say about casinos, which is obviously a form of gambling, which is forbidden by Islam, but they say that the house always wins. So these big uh, insurance companies are obviously not doing this out of the goodness of their heart or to help people. So they're obviously making a profit off people's insecurity and, na uh, and naivety. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, well, this is the second part. Mm -hmm. Because the first part, it, insurance deals with riba. Mm -hmm. And this is obvious. Obviously. You give money. And after a while, you get much more, or maybe you lose. And this goes to the second reason, which is gambling. Allah, the Almighty, states in the Quran, Oh, you believe intoxicants, uh, which is all kinds of alcohol drinks, and gambling, and al-ansab, and al-azlam, all are an abomination of shaitan, of Satan's handiwork. So, avoid them. And Allah said, Avoid strictly that abomination in order that you may be successful. Mm -hmm. What is gambling? The normal definition of gambling is putting money, hoping that you win more with the chance of losing all. Trying to get something easy, something for nothing. Yeah, well, it's not for nothing because I'm paying something. So what falls under gambling is definitely insurance. Mm -hmm. Because I'm paying a thousand dollars for my car. If I make an accident and it costs me a hundred thousand dollars to fix the car and another hundred thousand dollars to pay the damages and maybe four hundred thousand dollars for the blood money for the people I killed, mm -hmm. the company does all of that and pays it. So I made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I only paid a thousand dollars. And the chance is which is usually 99.9% .9 that I don't make any, any, any accidents. So the company is getting money for doing nothing. So the company takes a full thousand and I've lost it. Mm -hmm. So this is gambling. It's like lottery. You find people in Spain, in the UK, they buy lottery tickets mm -hmm. for peanuts. And they're hoping that they might win. One out of 50, 60 million chances. And the one who wins it hits the jackpot. Mm -hmm. And he wins like gazillion dollars uh, of, of, of prize money. This and, and the rest of the, the, the country, the rest of the continent did not get any thing. Mm -hmm. So this is gambling and gambling is uh, um, not permissible in Islam. And of course, uh, you mentioned uh, one of the first issues of it is also the issue of riba or usury, which is also one of the major sins. And I believe Allah mentioned in the Quran that it's, it's like a war with Allah and His Messenger. Yes, so whoever Allah. deals in, in interest, yes, this is uh, the fact. The third uh, um, danger of um, insurance is that it is, it's uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So you're going into this contract not knowing whether I'm going to get my money worth or I'm going to lose the money. And this, as mentioned before, is forbidden in Islam. Therefore... All kinds of such insurances are not permissible in Islam. This is what is known as 
commercial insurance mm -hmm. and there is a type of insurance that might be permissible but commercial insurance where you put your money and you either lose it all or win much much more is not permissible because whoever is, is this is being done to would not like it mainly and Allah says oh you who believe eat not your property among yourselves unjustly mm -hmm. eating is not physical eating it's devouring yes taking it mm -hmm. without uh, uh, being fair and just and it is so widely spread among the people the Muslims you have lots and lots of kinds of insurance in the world and is it fair to say that it's all haram it's all forbidden or we have to classify and segregate and which is and which isn't Mr. Khasim, we'd like to get into that topic and go ahead into which types of insurance might be permissible and which types are definitely impermissible so that the Muslims can benefit and practice their religion accordingly and please their Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but unfortunately we're just out of time for this halaqa with your permission we'd like to continue next week bismillah join us again assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh You can try to hold back the waves, but they will always wash upon your feet. Two waters flow with a barrier in between, the salty sea and rivers fresh and sweet. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah.